Welcome to Fayetteville Community Church. We welcome our church family and our visiting friends. Thank you for coming to worship with us. To find out more about our church, upcoming events, and other church activities, you may visit us online at www.fccnc.us. Now, uh, I just want to share some things out of my heart for you, to you for a little while. I'm a, I'm an Ephesians man, if you know what I'm talking about, the book of Ephesians. Paul uh, wrote the book of Ephesians, of course, and um, it's mostly about Timothy because Timothy was the pastor of the Ephesian church. And it was uh, somewhere around 50,000 members of that church, biggest church in the world at that particular time, and probably uh, the biggest. And a lot of things happened in the Ephesian church. And he left us some things to go by. I, I was uh, privileged to visit in the Soviet Union or of uh, the Ukraine area about 20 years ago. And I went with a man that is, uh, has been a friend of ours. He passed on a few years ago, Dr. Bill Bozanski. Many of you know him, you remember him by being, he was here several times. But I, I visited with him on a trip to the Ukraine. And um, we were worshiping in different places. One of the places we worshiped was an old prisoner of war, Second World War um, interrogation building. It was about five, ten times bigger than this building where, where people, they gathered people in to tell them what was going on and what they had to do. And they had uh, no heat in the building and temperature outside was like 20 below zero. It was so cold, the river, uh, Niper River had frozen over and they were skating on the river. And we were there to minister for a couple of weeks to different places. Was it cold or what? I had my guitar with me and I had to take a, finger, a glove, pair of gloves and cut some holes in the fingers to get my fingers through the, the uh, so I could get them on the strings of the guitar. And it was some kind of cold. One afternoon, it had warmed up just a little bit, up to about zero. And, uh, and, and, and we were, the service was going on. And Bill was, Bozanski, he was a good friend of ours and our family. I mean, we loved him and he just was such a good friend of ours. And he had asked me to sing a song. And I said, well, Bill, you know what you want me to sing? He said, sing whatever you want to. And so I chose to sing the song that Jake Hess sings, Prayer is a Key to Heaven, and Faith Unlocks the Door. And that's kind of what I'm talking about today is prayer. Because prayer will pierce the darkness. Prayer will cut through a lot of the junk that's in our lives and bring happiness and joy and peace to us. But I got up to sing that song and I was singing along and all of a sudden, I saw this strange-looking man come out the back door off the street. He was dirty, ragged, bound up with clothes that looked like he had pulled them off of somebody. Really looked bad. You could tell by looking at him, he wasn't an old man, but he was old as far as the things that had happened to him in his life. While I was singing that song, he come marching down the aisle. Well, they had security uh, in, in the front up there to watch over the ones that were working and uh, taking care of the service and everything. And so some of the guys met him in the aisle before he got down to where we were. And uh, he was telling them what he had come for. And when he got on down to the front, he met with Dr. Bozanski, who was right there. And he, I was up speaking or singing. And he, uh, he said, hold on a minute, Ken. So I did. And um, he, he said, this man has come off the street. He's an old man. He could tell by looking at him, he was pretty old. I couldn't tell it. But uh, he, he said, I asked him, what did he come here for? I 
I'll be with you in a minute. He said, I was going down the street and I heard an old man singing. That's 20 years ago. I wasn't an old man then, honey. <laughs> he said, I heard an old man singing and I just couldn't stay out there any longer. I had to have what's in here. And he gave his heart to the Lord and we had a shouting good time. I praise God for times like that where you know that it's God and nothing else. I, uh, I haven't been singing much in a long time and I'll be singing some more as time goes on. But I want to sing some of this song to you that I was singing in that interrogation place that day. If you know it, you can sing it with me. Prayer is the key to heaven, but faith unlocks the door. Words are so easily spoken. times have you ever prayed for something big or something small and how long did you have to wait or did the answer come at all words are mere expressions of thought and nothing more but believing my friend is what really counts and faith Faith is what unlocks the door. Have faith when you speak to the master. That's all he'll ask you for. Prayer is the key. Thank you, Milton. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Milton Smith is one of, one of my best friends, and he always, he's always been able to do whatever I ask him to do. <laughs> Praise God. I, I this morning just came in and asked him. He said, yeah, we'll do it. Now, I want to speak this morning about prayer because there was a lot of prayer going on in the book of Ephesians especially when it comes to the church. America today, and I want you to hear what I'm saying. America is at war, and the victor goes, to, the victor goes, the prize of our children and our children's children. War of light and darkness, Christ and Antichrist. There will be winners and there will be losers. I want to show you some things that I want you to hear very good. Principles of secular humanism forged now 
in the halls of Congress in our country will destroy this nation as we know it unless the righteous people in this nation, unless they rise up and put on the whole armor of God, pierce the darkness with what? With prayer. Pierce the darkness with prayer. Say it with me. Pierce the darkness with prayer. Listen, prayer, prayer is warfare. Y'all hear me now. It's hard to pray like you should. There's no compromise with the world and the flesh and the devil. There's no compromising with them. A friend of the world is an enemy of God. You can't be on both sides at the same time. Make up your mind today to be a person of prayer. Decide that you're going to be. I want you to see some scripture in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 13, if you will. Read it with me. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Hear that? Be strong in the Lord. And what? In the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And you go on over to verse number 18 and you'll see some more. Turn to verse number 18 if you would. Hallelujah. You stand against the wiles of the devil. 18. Say it with me. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now I want you to keep that scripture in mind today. Helmet of salvation. What is the helmet of salvation? Well, I, I, I put parentheses around the helmet of salvation and I write in it hope. Because Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5, he says, he talks about the salvation of hope. Now listen to me. Hope is not an illusion. Hear me now. Not like the secular world says, I hope, I hope, I hope. Hope is blessed assurance that good things are going to happen based on the promises of God's Word. Good things are going to happen based on the promises of God's Word. Now, I don't hope I'm saved. I know I'm saved. Come on, you need to know that. Some churches preach you can't know whether you're saved until you step into eternity. That's not the way the Word of God talks about it. In 1 John 4, 4, 413, it says, And these things have I written unto you that you may K-N-O-W, that you may know that you have what? Eternal life. If you're saved today, you've got eternal life. I don't hope I'm saved. I know based on the word of God that I'm saved. And when I die, don't you spend one dime praying me out of somewhere, a purgatory or wherever it might be. I'm not going there. Listen, my last breath here is my first breath there in the presence of the living God. My mind is protected by hope and I'm standing on the ground of hope. I don't hope I can be healed. I know that I can be healed by the power of the word of God. How do I know that? Because it says, by his stripes I am healed. I am the Lord, he says, that healeth all of your diseases. What Jesus has done, he can still do. He is strong enough to still do it. He can still do it. He's the same, the word says, yesterday, today, and how when? Forever. Our God is a healing God. He's a saving God. I don't hope that Jesus is coming again. I know that he is coming again because he said in his word, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place I am coming again behold I show you a mystery the Lord said we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye I tell you there's going to be a meeting in the air one of these days brother when Jesus returns in power and glory whether you are ready or not he's going to return it's going to take my physical restraint to hear me to keep from saying to some folks I told you so Are you still with me? Yeah. Hold on to your seat now. Hope, let me tell you something about hope. Hope protects your mind. Satan says you're walking down a dusty road. 
He fills your mouth with all kinds of things, with fear. He fills your mouth with depression and with doubt and with insecurity. And the list goes on. And when, but when you are armed and filled, come on now, Satan throws his fiery darts at you. He don't want you to live like you're living. He don't like that. You, but you have on the whole armor of God when he begins to throw those fiery darts at you. And you are protected by a supernatural power of God. And he cannot reach through that supernatural power of God. If you have on the breastplate of righteousness, righteousness means, this is what it means, as it ought to be by God's standard. This book is God's standard today. My standard for holiness is not established by the President of the United States. It's not established by any of the God-haters in Hollywood. My standard is not the standard of secular humanism. You can go, the list goes on. The God who said without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That's my standard. Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. I don't wonder about God's position on things that are going Going on in this world, I know what his position is on, and it's an abomination, the things that are going on in this country. Now, tomorrow, a thousand years from today, it'll still be an abomination, and you could name every one of them if you would do it. Abortion is one of them. I'm not going to go all, uh, all down the list. Proverbs says six things God hates, hands that shed innocent blood. God is pro-life. I don't wonder about new age. I don't, I don't play with crystal balls, horoscopes. I call them horrible scopes. <laughs> Mind control. I don't play with that stuff. I don't play with witchcraft or Satanism. If you play with that stuff, you're in trouble. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There's a way that seemeth right. The word of God says unto a man, but there the things of a man are the ways of death. Many gospels being preached today, only one will be saved and so forth. Listen, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the thing we've got to keep on preaching. And I'm not ashamed. I'm going to tell you in Faithful Community Church today, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed that I'm strong on the gospel of Jesus. I'm not ashamed that my feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I'm not ashamed that I'm, I am ready to preach the good news. Peace between God and man. Listen to me. From Eden to the crest of Calvary, God and man are at war trying to do the things that God wants done. But at Calvary, hear me, Jesus took, he took a sinful hand of man and the holy hand of God and he put them together and he said, it is finished. And aren't you glad today that he said that, my brothers and sisters? Listen, right then, the pain and the penalty of sin had been paid. It is finished. Because of that, I can now say, God is on my side. Can you declare that with me today? God is on my side. Every crisis that I have to go through a battle with, I can say, God is on my side. When depression settles in, I can say God is on my side. Some of you have been depressed and you've been down in a hole and you've been hurting and wondering how things are going to happen. But whenever you say God is on my side, when accusers rise up against you and things begin to happen to you, when wicked surround you and try to eat your flesh up, you say God is on my side. You take the shield of faith. The apostle Paul said, above all, take the shield of faith and that shield of faith will stop all of the fiery darts of the wicked. What are the fiery darts of the wicked? They're the devil shooting darts at you to try to get you on his side. Why? Jesus didn't win partial victory. He didn't win partial victory. Shield of faith above all will stop all the fiery darts of the wicked. You see, because Jesus Christ is totally Lord. Amen. When you're walking down the road of life and you're ambushed, you've been ambushed before, haven't you? Yeah. You get behind the shield of faith. You'll be preserved by God's power, by the shield of F-A-I-T-H, the shield of faith. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is this word of God. That's what it says. Leading humanity to the cross of Christ. Bread of life that satisfies. Come on now. Living water that refreshes. 
Are you getting the message? Come on. Those who drink will have refreshing water. This word of God is meat for men. It's milk for children. It's a pillow upon which the saints of God have rested their heads down through the ages. And this word of God is stronger than cocaine, honey. Amen. It's stronger than lust. It's stronger than greed. It's stronger than pornography. It can pull down secular humanism founded by this nation on many occasions. It's the only message this word of God is. It is the only message that can preserve this nation. And our preachers in this nation have got to stand up and preach for him and glorify him in everything that we do. It's the only message that is going to save this nation. Back to the Bible is what we need to be preaching in America. And brothers and sisters, that's what we're going to do. Pierce the darkness, if you please, with prayer. Prayer, the key to God's storehouse of grace and power. All that God is and has is available for you if you only pray. Prayer is the key to heaven, but faith unlocks the door. Many of you in this room today, emotionally, spiritually, financially, in constant distress, maybe you are in some of those areas and, and maybe many others. Why? Because you have never really learned how to pray. How to pray. Disciples said to the Lord, teach us, Lord, how to pray. There's a right way and a wrong way. How do you pray? By lighting candles? Father invited his boss one day over to his house for lunch. And it was a hot July day. No air conditioning in the house. And the father was impressing his boss, trying to show his children what kind of a man his boss was. Well, and he told his little boy, he said, son, you pray today. And he said, well, Daddy, I don't know what to say. He said, well, sure you do. He said, just say what you heard me say. <laughs> so the son bowed his head and he said, dear Lord, why in heaven's name did I invite these people over to our house <laughs> on a hot summer day like this? I love children, don't you? <laughs> They'll get you every time. They'll tell you more truth in 30 seconds than, than parents will tell you all day. Like, Daddy slept on the couch last night. Are y'all hearing me? Prayer, hear me, is laying hold of God's will. Come on now. Find out what God wants you to pray for and do it and you'll get it. Prayer is not sending God to run your errands for you. Prayer is submitting to the purposes of God. Prayer produces boldness. Prayer that you may speak boldly. Boldness of a lion. There are problems in the pulpits in America today. Some who preach watered down gospel. You can't find redemption in watered down gospel. I'm not here criticizing. Forgiveness sin, healing. We need to have that in our churches today. Brother, sister, if you're called to preach, preach heaven beautiful and hell hot. Amen. Tell it like it is. Amen. Preach a gospel that will save America. Prayerlessness, prayerlessness is sin. It's failing to pray and it's wrong. In the book of Samuel, verses 12, chapter 12, verse 23, it says, God forbid that I should, be, should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. God forbid. When you pray, not if you pray, but when you pray, Paul said, pray without ceasing. 
prayer equals great and mighty things. Now, that's my message today is prayer. When the church becomes supernatural again, young people will stop searching for Satanism and witchcraft and the things that they are searching for today. When people walk the aisles of the church house to be saved again and dead marriages come back together again, sons come off of drugs, daughters off of alcohol, then power will be released and this nation will be a nation again under God. And we've got to preach until we see some of those things happening and that's what we'll do. You see, God cannot answer prayers till they're prayed. You've got to do it. Prayer releases God's power into your life. Prayerless Christians equals powerless Christians. You hear that? Write that down in your mind. Prayerless Christians equals powerless Christians. Prayer is the secret to power with God. Daniel was in the lion's den. Why did he pray? Well, his prayer life terrorized the bureaucrats of Babylon. He pierced the darkness in that place with prayer. Elijah prayed and fire fell from heaven. You see that it won't be boring if you get that kind of prayers. The Bible says in the book of Acts, the place was shaken. When they did what? What do you think? When they prayed, Lord, do it again. Do it again, Lord. That's what we're praying for. He prayed. Moses did. Hands raised. Israel won the war. Hands down. What do you think happened? Israel lost the war. When, you're, when you keep on praying, you're going to win some battles and more battles and more battles. Listen, most of us in this room don't pray near enough. Jesus said we're not powerful because he said he wasn't powerful because he was the son of God. He was powerful because he had a prayer life because Jesus done some praying. He prayed all night on occasions. Then came signs and wonders and miracles happening in the area where he was. Get that clearly sign in school. In case of nuclear attack, the Supreme Court's ban on prayer in school will be temporarily suspended. That's what we need, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, we asked the question. Why pray? Well, we pray to tap in to the supernatural world. Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit knoweth our weaknesses. Our weakness is our mental capacity. No matter how brilliant that you are, you're playing in a sand pile compared to the genius of God. But he wants you to be more like him. The Spirit knoweth our weaknesses. For we know not how to pray as we ought to pray. But the word says the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us according to the will of God. You can pray with supernatural knowledge when you have a relationship with God. And you can get your prayers answered. Answered prayer is not necessarily a miracle. Answered prayer is a law. It's a law of God. Ice freezes at 32 degrees. We know that this last week, don't we? That's a law. When you meet God's conditions in prayer, you'll get an answer. Folks, I'm, 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 I'm trying to be serious with you. I want you to hear me now. It's the only thing that can happen if you meet God's conditions in prayer. John 14, 14 says, If you ask anything in my name, what do you think it says next? I will what? Do it. I will do it. Matthew 7 verse 8 says, For everyone that asketh receive it. You see, listen to me now. Prayer is a law of God. That's one of God's laws. Matthew 7 8 says, For everyone that asketh 
receiveth. Prayer is not heaven's let's make a deal. Always three answers to prayer. Yes, no, or wait. We don't like that one, do we? Two of them we don't want to hear. No and wait. Instant everything. Antiques. People want instant stuff. Isaiah says, They that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Renew. Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. He that hath an ear, let him hear. You choose to hear with your ears. Some people call it call on the phone and they yak and they yak and they yak and they hang up and you ain't had time to say nothing. <laughs> That's how some people pray. God says, I want to talk back to you. Amen. Let him do it. Pray and listen to what God tells you. Things that hinder prayer. He that cometh unto God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. I've heard my dad stand in the pulpit and say that scripture many times because he is a rewarder of those who do what? Diligently seek him. You see, unforgiveness hinders prayer. He'll forgive us as we forgive others. Conditions for God, God answered prayer. Laws of asking. Ask and you shall receive. That's a law. Verbalize your request. Speak it. Don't just think it. It's the mirror of the soul. God hears what you speak. Genesis, you'll see this. And God said, and God said, and God said. You see, God created Adam, right? And Adam said, and he created Eve. And Eve said, and Eve said, and Eve said, and Eve said, and her gender is still saying. <laughs> the pa pastor to a teenage boy whose father had just died, son did your father have any final words? And the boy said, no. Mother was with him to the bitter end. <laughs> now you see, God, God gets angels ready to work in your behalf. Now, now you know your wife is an angel, don't you? She's all up in the air harping on something. You know she's an angel. You'll get that after a while. <laughs> Ask God for the greater and impossible things. The story, there was a king riding through his kingdom with his entourage, and he met this peasant. What would you like to have, he said. The king asked him, what would you like to have? And the peasant said, I would like to have your horse. Well, the king denied him having the horse. And so another peasant was coming up the road. He said, what would you like to have? He said, I want your house. Well, he denied him the house. He said, I ain't going to give you the house. I'd like your horse. And I'd like your house. Well, the next one he met, what do you want? Like, what would you like to have? I'd like to have your house, your castle, everything, half of everything that you have. The king said, you got it. Now, the aide said to the king, why'd you do that? The king said, I am tired of such small asking. I'm delighted to give to someone who has that much vision. If we build a barn, you're going to ask for bigger things. You ask for greater things. Because it's going to be impossible to build it unless we get our shoulders to the wheel, all of us, and do bigger and better things and pray like we've never prayed. Do you need healing? Now, I'm going to come to a close here in a little bit because some of you beating your watch on the pew already. Do, do you need healing? The doctor says 
you can't get it. The Word of God says, ask and you shall receive. Amen. Do you need supernatural power from heaven to break the yoke binding your children? Ask and you shall receive. Do you need peace that passes understanding? Ask and you shall receive. The stain of sin has got to be removed. Ask and you shall receive. America to come back to God is going to take some asking. Ask and it shall be done. Ask according to God's will. God's will is not mysterious. Isaiah said the way of the Lord is so simple that a fool cannot err therein. God's will is consistent with his word. Know his will by reading his word. God is light. In him is there no darkness at all. He's against darkness, the occult, Satanism, witchcraft, fortune telling, horoscopes, mind control, Jean Dixon and her crowd and all of the followers her and so forth. He's against that. Why? Because God is life. I have come that you may have life, he said, and have it more abundantly. God is pro-life, honey. I'm telling you, God is peace, opposes fear. He opposes manipulation. He, he opposes intimidation. He opposes domination. He opposes torment. He wants you to live in his peace. That's what God wants for all of you today. Because God is love. He opposes bitterness. He opposes racial strife. Cities don't need government grants. They need to experience the love of God and become one in the spirit. God is a forgiving God. You don't forgive if you don't. You're out of the will of God. God is such a merciful God. God's a holy God. I don't have to pray about pornography, X-rated movies, subscribing to Playboy. Get it out of your home. It has no place in the house of a righteous man. Y'all don't love me that much, do you? God is authority. All authority comes from God. You're in rebellion against God's delegated authority when you're out of the will of God. Rebellious child fights his father. Rebellious citizens fight with the police. God does everything through righteous authority. God is a giver. If you're a tight wad, if you're greedy and selfish, Scrooge, refuse to tithe, then you're out of the will of God. That means you're a thief. I told you you wouldn't love me after this. <laughs> God is a provider, folks. That's what he is, a provider. I know it's God's will. I don't have to pray if it's your will, Lord. I know that it's his will for me to do things that's right and good. God is a healer. He said, I am the Lord that healeth all of your diseases. I know people that's connected with our own family that don't live in this area that are dying because they've smoked themselves to death. And Lillian and I, are, I am older than them. She ain't older than nobody. She, she's younger every day. <laughs> God is a healer. Listen. Oh, I'm just suffering for Jesus. I've heard people say that. Well, that's wrong. He suffered for you at Calvary. And if, if that's what you preach, then stop taking painkillers. And quit and suffer. If that's what you want to do, you can do it. God is a worker. He's a creator. Jesus was a carpenter. Twelve disciples worked. Get a job and go to work. Don't be a lazy scoundrel. 
Work is a dirty word in America. Him that don't work, don't eat. That needs to be etched on the doors of Health, Education, and Welfare Department in Washington, D.C. Now, please don't shoot me before I get out of here. <laughs> but I want to tell you something about this prayer life. You need to pray more than you do. And I want to tell you something about people's lives today in this country that is ruining this country. If you can work and you won't work, and you're receiving welfare from the government, if you can work and won't work, be ashamed. You're a moral financial cancer on the soul of America. You're an asset to nothing if you don't work. God is the author of laughter. He wants us to enjoy ourselves. We well, said, a merry heart does good like a medicine. Look at somebody right beside you and laugh at them. That's the way to do it. Come on, laugh at them. When you laugh, Hear me, when you laugh, enzymes come from your brain that heal you, that fight diseases, that extend your life. Come on. Joy of the Lord is your strength, honey. You need to laugh more. Pray in faith believing, says Matthew 21, 22. If you have faith and doubt not, you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And maybe it will be done or maybe it won't. What does it say, James? It shall be done. Everybody say it. It shall be done. Now, that's the Word of God. Pray specifically. As Wesley says, once in a while, I'm almost through. <laughs> know what you want. Come on now. Know what you want and pray for that. So specifically, pray for it. That when God answers, you'll know it was God and not random choice or chance. A man one time wanted to get married and put an ad in the newspaper. And he wanted a good woman. Don't we all, guys? Yeah. And he's put in there, this woman must be able to clean, sew, cook, dig worms, and clean fish. <laughs> And, and, and she must have a boat and a motor. And please send pictures of the boat and the motor. <laughs> now, he knew what he wanted, didn't he? And he's going after it, honey. Listen, pray with power of binding and loosing. Pray with agreement. Get with somebody and say, agree with me on this. We need to pray about this. Take absolute control of your life, not just part of it. Whatsoever you bind on earth, according to Matthew 18, 18, bind, God binds it in heaven. Many people are waiting for God to take action, and God is waiting for you to take action. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you all will hear some of the things I've said today and begin to put them into action, you'll see some changes in your life. If any two of you shall agree on earth as touching one thing, the Word says, it shall be done for you of my Father which is in heaven. That's straight out of the Word of God. When two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of them. Why did God give us all of this power? Because we need it. Amen. Satan is out to rob and kill and destroy, but he has come to you and me that we may have life and life everlasting. The only way to control the supernatural powers of darkness is to put on the whole armor of God and pray and pierce the darkness with your prayers. Luke eleven twenty 20 says, But if I with the finger of God cast out demons, no doubt the kingdom of God is come unto you. And listen to what it says. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come, he overcomes him. He takes from him all the armor wherein he trusted, and he divides the spoil. Now, there are two applications here, and, and I promise I will close. Satan is a strong man. He had it his way until Jesus defeated him at Calvary. Satan is totally now unarmed. He's unarmed. 
He does nothing that you don't let him do. Praying, praying Christians will strip him of power that would come against you. And to share in Calvary's victory, we must bind the strong man. He is Satan's representative over families, persons, cities, organizations. Your problems, come on now. Your problems are not just people. They're supernatural powers that control people. And we need to get to where we know what we're praying for. We get above that. Illustration, and I'm through. Is someone lying or falsely accused you? The Bible says Satan is the accuser. Lying person is not your problem. Lying spirit is the person, is your problem. How do you attack it? Lord Jesus, in the power, this is my message here. Lord Jesus, in the power of your name, by the authority of your word and your shed blood, I bind that lying spirit and I command him to keep silent. You say, my husband's a drinker. Well, don't run through house looking for Maylocks. Attack the problem and begin to loose the powers of heaven on him or her. Attack sickness the same way. Lord Jesus, by the power of your name and the shed blood, the word says of your cross, I loose my son or my daughter or my brother or my sister. Jesus for Lazarus said, loose him and let him go. Now, many of you, you have family that's bound by drugs, alcohol, adultery, <coughs> fornication, bitterness, resentment, prejudice, idolatry, Satanism, witchcraft, the occult, mind control. Listen to my next statement. In the name of Jesus and by the power of the word of God, loose them in Jesus' name. That's what we need to be praying. Agree with another believer where two or three are gathered together. Put on the whole armor of God. And let's take our churches back. Let's take America back, brothers and sisters, and get godly people to ruling this country through our prayers because time is running out for us to get things done. Give the Lord a hand for that. Thank you. Now, okay, um, Yeah. <coughs> we need to pray for somebody and get I want to get all I want all the uh, ushers to come down to the front. John Roden, I want you right here in the middle. Where are you at? You, you won't tell them what's wrong. St I want you to stand across here so stand up this way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right in here, John. I want y'all to go, go over that way. I want to stretch out across here. Yeah. You come here. Okay, you tell. Brother John has had a, a diagnosis that's not a good diagnosis from the doctors. They said he has stomach cancer. Is that it? Yes, yeah. yeah. And uh, this brother here that's putting his hands on him has been completely healed of cancer. Yes. And I am going to be. Amen. I am. And he's been.
been a faithful usher, and so uh, Ken, all through his sermon, he said, where two or three agree on any one thing touching it, it shall be done. Now, if you believe that, I want you to stretch your hands forth to Brother John. All of you ushers be touching one another and, and, and touching Brother John. How many of you believe that Jesus is the healer? Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take you at your word. Your word says that you are the Lord that heals us. Lord, scripture after scripture says that you came for our healing just as much as you came for our salvation. And Brother John Roden is a believer. And your word says that these things belong to a believer. And Lord, we just touched Brother John right now. And we ask that in our touch, Lord, that your touch would be behind every touch that he's feeling right now. And we come against this cancer in the name of Jesus. And we tell you, cancer, you must take your hands off of this blood bought child of God. And we claim healing for him right now. Every doctor that he goes to, Lord, just put your hands upon them and anoint them with your Holy Spirit that everything that he needs will be done for him for his healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, y'all stay up here. Stay up here. If, if there are people in this room that, that have a need, I want you, you guys to line up straight, straight here now. Y'all know how to pray? Y'all can do it. Right, just face this audience. If, if, you have, if you have some things that's going on in your life you need to get rid of, if you need healing in your body, if you need deliverance from something, come to one of these guys and let them pray for you. And we'll, we'll agree with them. Come on now. I, I'll, I'll be praying for, for some, and, and many of you will, but, but come, get up here and help us. Go over there. That young man right there can pray, and there's a bunch more of you in here that can pray. Go ahead and pick out somebody and let them pray for you. We're going to believe God. Uh, um, go, go help that fella. Praise God. His name is wonderful. That's what he's playing on the pen. Well, that, this is what Jesus said to do. Do what is what we're doing. Let them that is sick among you call for the elders of the church, and the Lord will raise them up. Any other guys want to come and help us? Heath, come on and help us. some things going on here now come on don't don't let any of these guys stand here and not have somebody praying for are y'all awake I can't believe that all of you in this room are sitting here and you're none of you there's some of you that's saying I don't need this Listen, honey, you need it, you need it, you need it. My Lord of mercy, how you need it. And I want you to come on and just say, pray for me. Help me through this thing that I'm going through. You don't have to be a member of the church here. If you're visiting with us, you come on and let us pray for you. Because it's going to bless you. Your life's going to change. Things are not going to be the same. God promised and he will do it. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I love to see people praying. Folks, this is what it's all about right here now. This is what it's all about. Why don't you, while they're praying, why don't you just get a hold of somebody that's close to you? Put your hand on them, touch their hand, hold on to them, and let's pray for them. a little bit. Father, we're coming now in the name of Jesus. Lord, let
let everyone that is in this room and in this building, let them sense your presence, Lord, right now. Let them know that your presence is in the room. Thank you, Lord, for being in the room today. Thank you for being here in power and authority. And Father, I pray for the things that's going on in people's lives that are in this room today, things they need to get delivered from. I pray, Lord, that some of the surprises that they need will become reality right now in the name of Jesus. And when they walk out these doors today, let them know that they've been in the presence of a holy God and they're not ashamed to ask for what they need. Lord, I just pray and thank you for everyone that is here today. And I pray that this service will not stop here, but it will go on until we see the mighty eternal word of God moving among us in measures that we've never seen before. Lord, I pray, I pray for these. And I love you, Lord, for answering our prayers today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want to thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you've given us for the things you've done for us, for the places we've been, Lord, and the things that, the places we're yet to go and be in this services, in this church. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody love Jesus today? Oh, come on, smile at one body now. Smile at somebody and give them a credit back.